with Node.js, and say I want to run my little, uh, what was it, a Blink LED example. I just run Node Blink LED, and I've got fun blinky LEDs, right? And that's that's this that's this program right there. All right, so I've got this JavaScript library. It's called BoneScript. Um, it looks a little bit like Arduino stuff, where I just say I want to set digital right to pins high or low, right? And that's how I turn pins on and off. Notice I'm also, this might be too dim, I'm also setting this P914. So these headers are P8 and P9, and pin 14, I've got a little wire running over here, this LED right here. So I'm able to do external hardware, not just these onboard LEDs, but I'm actually able to control the I.O. pins with the same, same code. Um, and also say I want to actually check the status of a, of a button. Um, I've tied a button on here as well. And um, so I'm going to use that, that button to, to I'm going to read this. When I, when I attach an interrupt to that button, it's going to call this function. Set LED, it's just going to read what the status of the button is and write it out to the, to the LEDs. And so node button. And yeah, so when I do that, blinking, yeah. So you see the bottom LED is actually turning on and off when I press the button. And also yeah, this green yeah. LED. Can't, can you see it? Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so there's not much more to it than that. You start doing development and realize that you're in you're in Node, you're in Python, you're in all these other things. So like grabbing an internet library, talking to the internet, that's the easy part, right? Yeah. You want to get to the hardware. Um, and if you're brand new to hardware, right, there, there are different things out there. This is one I kind of I flipped open. This is done by the folks at Tufts University. This is still in prototype phase, so I don't ship it with the board yet. Um, but I just go to a website where it's at, and I can do things like you know, tie to one of the user LEDs and start it blinking. <laughs> All right, so we should speed up. Receive blinking LED. All right, so here I could use this to start like testing different inputs and outputs. Um, and I'm kind of seeing that I'm wiring things up. So hopefully the hardware doesn't have to be like so intimidating, right? So we're definitely, and we're, we're, in all of this, we're just really leveraging this, the, what Linux does for us, right? And to show you what that is, So I'll show you what Linux does for you. It just essentially puts everything into a file. So that pin happens to be tied to GPIO 20. When I press the button, right, you'll see it's a one. And when I don't press the button, if I read the value, you see it's a zero, right? So yes, I've got this JavaScript library that will do that for me, reading and writing the file. But if I'm comfortable on Linux and doing all this stuff, it's just a file, yeah. right? right Write a bash script. Sure. Bleak an LED with bash, go sure. for it. Sure. <laughs> but, if, but if you also want to detect when somebody's opened a door and you know go publish something to Twitter, I don't know. But plug in a USB camera, you know, capture an image, do open CV. I built a little camera that, that around, goes around and, and takes pictures of people's faces, detects them, and puts mustaches on them. <laughs> um, that was you know, a great idea for my for my wife. Um, you know, hey, you know, mustaches are cool. Okay, let me when I put mustaches on people's faces. It's, it's the stuff is is not that hard. Um, and if you're looking for places to learn how to do more of it, I'm going to pitch hackerspaces. Um, join a place like I3 Detroit. There are lots of good experts there on building stuff with, with stuff with electronics, doing mechanical stuff. Um, it's great to, to to join and don't just. Don't just join and like try to use the tools on your own. That's not the point. Uh, the point is you go, you go to some of the media meetups that they have at the at the, the hacker spaces. You, you you find out who owns who is kind of the warden of the different um, tools that they have in the space, 
and you ask them, how do I use the tools? Who else is an expert on this? And and you know, you become really annoying to everybody else in the space for a while until you become the expert, and then new people start annoying you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really fantastic way to, to do things. Um, there's a, a great book called um, Zero to Maker, which I didn't do much of a pitch of and I intended to. Um, it was written by a guy named David Lang. Um, we lost his job, um, started hanging out in, in hackers, local hacker spaces, and ended up starting this company, OpenRLV, that builds underwater exploration vehicles as an open hardware project. Um, initially, he was going to go dive and, and well, not dive, he was going to build this robot that he couldn't afford to go buy one of these off the shelf. He was just going to work with everybody in the hackerspace to build this robot, to go and look for some, some lost treasure in a cave. Um, thought there was you know, some shipwreck that lost some gold and maybe that would fund him for a while. Um, and the, the, you know, he built this, built this robot with everybody um, and there ended up not finding gold, um, but what he did get was you know, all this expertise, learning to work with people, getting a cool community to support them, and you know he now runs, this, he now owns a successful build business, building underwater <coughs> exploration vehicles for other people that want to go find buried treasure. Um, so David Lang, Zero to Maker, um, he ended up using a beagle bone um, for that. Um, and um, it's a really cool story. If you get a chance to read it, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty easy read. Um, and it's nice and inspirational. So thank you for your time. I'm, exactly. probably, I'm 10 minutes over and yeah. I pulled the book. <laughs> Is there PHP libraries for this? Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, we're, like I so said, we're ship, shipping with Apache. Um, like, so full-blown Apache on Debian. So <laughs> PHP it's plugins, go for it. It's an app get away. Have to get, have, you know, have to get. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. There's no further than that away. Well, that's the interpreter, but I meant just the already classes out there. That Not for for the I/O functions, right? So you're talking about for the the hardware I/O functions. I believe so, but I'm not aware. But then you can okay. just read the files. I mean, it's just reading and writing files, so yeah. creating one's easy. But no, I'm, I I think there is, but I'm not aware. of Okay, of exact ones. Ruby, JavaScript, Python, Erlang, yes. Okay. They are. Yep, they're available in Micro Center. Cool, thank you. And Ellen, thank you very much.